Let's be honest, you already know if you want to play Stateboard. Just look at it. Does the concept of a small bird riding a Stateboard appeal to you? If so, then we're done here. Okay, so you probably also want to know if it's actually any good, which is a much more complicated topic of discussion. For this particular game, we're going to need to delve into what makes a Stateboard game good. What was Tony Hawk's Pro Stater's special sauce? Was it the challenge, the tight controls, the soundtrack? If it's any of those, then we're in trouble here. To answer everyone's first question, Stateboard is more Tony Hawk's Pro Stater than it is State. You have a button for grab, grind, and flip, and if you rock the control stick up and down, you'll go into a manual. The controls will feel familiar to anyone who's played Tony Hawk Pro Stater, but the actual feel of the game will not. You're a bird. You have hollow bones, and you are filled with fluff and birdseed. You can flap your wings, and you have to grab your board with your beak. As a result, the physics are entirely different because of this. And by different, I mean screwier. Floatier is perhaps the more appropriate term. The landings lack impact, the grinding feels frictionless, falling off your board is an appropriately wholesome experience, but it's nowhere near as tight, and that's going to take some getting used to. You're really here for the bird though, right? Well then good news, the bird is great. You can customize the crap out of your avian stator, choosing from a load of different species, then decking them out with all kinds of gear. There's more to unlock hidden in the environment, just in case you don't think your feathered friend is fashionable enough. With that in mind, hopefully you have the stomach for meme talk. Like that sort of speech that maybe started with doge and things like that. A scream is a scrim, and a bird is a burb. I'm okay with it honestly, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone wanted to reach through the screen and slap the text boxes. The story involves aiding the bird's big friend, a human whose job has them down. This starts by simply cleaning their apartment, but proceeds to corporate sabotage. It's really not a great story, but some of the birds have character arts that are there and get resolved. Thankfully, you're here for the birds, right? In total, there are five stages, and the goal is to clear as many of the quests scattered throughout. You're supposed to focus on the gold dots on the minimap, but this confused me because there is no minimap. Apparently, when they say minimap, they mean a picture of the level on the pause screen, which I really didn't figure out until the third level. In any case, you don't have to clear all the goals, but most of them. There's usually just under 20 to get through. They range from collecting floating letters, to getting big combos, to starting fires, as birds do. Likewise, they range from simple and pointless, to controller breakingly frustrating. I got stuck on the second level trying to fan bounce. I'm not even sure if I did it right in the end, it just finally accepted it. There was also this goal where I had to breach something that was high up out of a quarter pipe, and my bird just refused to transfer out and grab it. Shouting threats at the screen didn't help. It's the worst kind of frustrating. The type where you swear you're going through the process correctly, but the game just won't accept it. And Statebird is a game that seems to take pride in being laid back and accessible. Then there are these finicky tasks that get in the way. The physics, in general, can be a pain, even though you're able to tune them. Thankfully, you can make it harder to bail or get rid of the balance mini game entirely. It's not a title that wants you to suffer, which makes the suffering I experienced a little unusual. Nonetheless, it's supposed to be something you can reach the end of on your own terms, and that's somewhat commendable. In a similar sense, you can build your own mixtape. The soundtrack is going to be hit and miss, and I personally found some of it abrasive after a while. Most of it gets unlocked by finding cassettes of the environments, which is unfortunate because it means you'll be hearing a lot of repetition in the first couple of levels. Like, I'm not kidding. Holy crap, I am so tired of the OST tracks, which means bird sounds, various genres of music, and clips from documentaries. But when food is scarce, they may attack other birds. I'm uncomfortable just recalling them, I would like to purge them from my mind and salt the once fertile soils they seeped into. The other music is contributed by various bands, mostly ska and punk. I didn't find it terrible, I even liked a few of the songs. However, they're pretty on the nose. One song includes lyrics about how my entire generation can't afford a house. Like, yeah, that's pretty true, but it could be worse. You should talk to the dude sitting about buying a house and finding out it's haunted. Statebird has it where it counts, the birds. Everything else, though, is tolerable, barely. It has a habit of making it difficult to enjoy the birds. And that's sort of where the paradox lies in Stateburn. It has this absolutely friendly veneer, inviting you in, telling you to leave your shoes on, have a seat on the couch, but no, not that cushion. It pretends like there's no pressure, then decides that it's time to rack up 200,000 points. It's just overall not that well executed. The visits and the gameplay are not where they should be. The levels are just okay, the goals are rarely entertaining, but you're here for the birds, right? There are definitely stateboarding birds. I can guarantee they are in Stateburn. I'm not even being sarcastic, the birds are absolutely great. Just try to focus on that and nothing else. 
If that fails, then perhaps focus your attention on Destructoid.com for more written reviews, news, original features, and more. And as always, thank you for watching.